Hi everyone, Nicholas Buffett is here from sunny Cyprus and boy is it hot and humid today. Now, today's video tutorial is about Microsoft OneDrive, in particular three of my favorite features in Microsoft OneDrive and three features which are not that well known. And those that do know these features don't really use them that much. I think they're absolutely fantastic. It's a secure links, manage access and request files. Now, in the timestamps below in the description, you can click to jump to any one of these features very, very quickly. And that would be a good opportunity for you to also like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, so here I am in my 365 portal and I've opened my Microsoft OneDrive and I've gone to this particular folder here, Student Work Collection, for the demonstration today. And I've got three folders in here and these folders have got some files inside. Now, I'm going to be using the classic, uh, you know, create a share link to share with people. And I can do that by going to the three ellipses and going to share. Now, you can do this also from your synced OneDrive folder in Windows Explorer. So if we have a look over here, this is my Windows Explorer, uh, my OneDrive open the same folder. And if I right click on this year seven folder here, I can click on the share button here or I can go to the show more options and go to share here, it's exactly the same thing. You're going to see this interface with this interface is exactly the same. So we can create the secure links very, very easily. So I'm going to use the, the web interface for this. Uh, the only reason is I'm going to demonstrate everything from the web interface because some things from the other things that we're going to be looking at today, you're not going to be accessed through the synced folder in Windows Explorer. So from here, the one thing I do want to uh, point out is this thing here, anyone with the link can edit. So if I click on this, I get this interface here. And you can see at the bottom, we get the set expiration date, set password and block download. But you can also get that when you go to actually uh, share and click here where the pencil is for the name and group, you're going to put link settings. It's exactly the same interface. Now, again, uh, what's really important to notice is that anyone with the link gives you these extra features, other things like people in our organization, um, you're not going to get that expiration date and you're not going to get the, the password protection. And the reason is if they're in your uh, organization or you're going to specify specific people or groups, then when they click that link, it's going to actually authenticate them. But if they're not signed in, they're going to have to sign in with their account. And that way, you know who's got access to this. So the, anyone with the link is the one that's important if you want to create secure links. Now, the first thing that you want to have a look at here is the expiration date. So if you want people to be able to contribute to a particular file, if you're collaborating with something and you want everybody's responses in by a particular date, so you don't keep getting more responses after a particular date, then you can put an expiration date for that link. And after that date, that link is not going to be active anymore. The set password is really good. So if you want to set a password so that um, only people with a particular password are able to access this file, then that's where you're gonna put your password. I strongly suggest, however, you use very secure passwords. I'm going to use a weak password, one, two, three, four, and also send the password using a different means than the way that you're sending the link. So if you're posting the link in a chat, do not post the password in another chat because that's the same platform. If you're sending the link by email, don't send the password by email, even if it's a separate email, because if your email is compromised, then your email is compromised, they'll have both. So I, I tend to use things like SMS messages for very um, for more secure or very um, sensitive uh, information. And this is a fantastic way to protect and be a little bit more GDPR compliant if you're sending documentation, sharing documentation, which does contain sensitive information. Okay, the next one we're gonna have a look at is the block download. Now, this will only be enabled if you choose the allow editing or remove the allow editing feature, because if, they, if you're allowing them to edit, then you're allowing them essentially to download and copy paste that data. So I'm going to remove the allow editing and slide that over. I'm gonna click on apply, and you can also add a group here, or uh, other people's emails. Now, remember, if you do add a group or you do add other people's emails, it's not going to authenticate them. It's not going to authenticate them because you're saying anyone with the link. It simply means in this section here that when you add, for example, a group teachers, uh, my, my group here, actually teacher, my teacher training group here, Everybody who's a member of this group is going to get an email with the link. When they do use that link, they will not be authenticated by your Azure Active Directory. 
okay that only happens if you're going to uh, say only people in my organization or specific people if it is anyone with the link it's not going to authenticate them all right so i'm going to click on here copy and there's my link so i'm going to click on copy that link i'm going to open a incognito window paste that link here so i'm not signed in with any account and look at that you've just received a link to a folder that requires a password so i need to know the password to enter this one two three four and click on verify and as soon as that is done you can see here the files inside this folder all the files inside that folder have been locked in the sense that if i do open this up it says you don't have permission to download or print this file in fact you're not even able to copy paste the text i can't even if i try to do that if i do control c now or right click i don't get the copy and if i do control c and open up my notepad for example let's bring my notepad here and i do control v you can see it's only giving me that link so i cannot copy that text okay and you can't download it and you can't print it so that's basically a uh, blocking the download and the printing that's a secure link now that manage access basically means how you can manage the access of the links that you've created to files and folders for example if i go to this year eight folder here i'm going to click on these three ellipses and this time i'm going to go to manage access now note if i just jump over to my windows explorer window here you can see that if i do a right click on that folder I don't have the manage access option, okay? And this is why I'm working directly from the 365 portal through my browser, so that I can demonstrate all three of these features. So the manage access is only accessible through OneDrive portal through your 365 account. So let's go back and I'm gonna click on manage access. Now I've selected this folder here, the year eight folder. I'm gonna go right click, or well, actually click on the ellipses, manage access. And now what I can see here is a window which basically shows me all the links which I've generated and what settings. For example, I created a link here which says people you specify can view. And if I click here, I can see I've specified this to the teacher training members. If I want to remove that group, I can. There you go. Want to remove teacher training members access? Remove. So immediately that's been modified anybody who is in that group will not have access to it if i click on the settings cog here i can add another group or i can add specific people i can change the option to view to can edit and that's absolutely fine or i can delete the link so i can just delete that link as well there you go that link does not work anymore if we have a look at this one here it says only the people you specify who have this link will have access to view and again I've got here student one and I can modify that link if I go back to my year seven folder which is the one that we just worked with now go to manage access I can see here and this is the beautiful thing about manage access if I want to change the password or whatever here it is anyone with the link and password can view only so if I click on the settings I now can either add or change the expiration date I can change the password so if I delete that password I'm going to put another password in there one two three four five six this time it says it's weak but I don't care and it says that um, here block download I'm just going to click on apply there change it okay and now I can copy this link here copy go to the incognito window control v there's my link and now the password has changed check this out if i put one two three four verify that doesn't work if i put one two three four five six that does work so you can change the settings of a link that's manage access okay so here i am this is my desktop and you can see my setup here Two student folders student one and student two this is the contents of student one this is the contents of student two and this is my stu work collection folder the one that i've been using up till now i'm going to be adding a new folder here to be collecting work that students are going to be submitting now if we have a look here we've got two we've got a word document for student one and a word document for student two and both these documents have exactly the same file name and extension type 
Now, under normal circumstances, when we try to add files with the same name and extension type, the one will either overwrite the other or it will create one which says copy and you don't know which belongs to who. So we're going to see how the request files feature is actually going to resolve this for us. So let's go back to our portal. So here I am. Now, again, this feature is only available if you're logged into Microsoft OneDrive online through your 365 portal. So from here, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to, I'm going to call this folder, let's say STU uh, Collect Work. Now, I'm going to click on Create. And the only thing it's going to ask me when I'm going to create the request files link is just one title. You can see this is just a, a box standard folder. I'm going to click on the three ellipses, go to request files, and here's what it asks me. It asks me a small description so that the students or whoever's going to get this link will understand what it is that I'm asking for them. So let's say um, submit database project work till now. So just uh, a general description and then I'm going to go to next now in the next section here I can copy the link and just send this I preferably um, add this as a tab in my class team for my students so my students don't need to have to keep going back and trying to find the link or the email and they just go to Microsoft Teams and they click on the tab at the top and then they can just submit folders in there I have one for each class however you can send the link by email you can also add people's uh, emails here or a group email or let's say a class team email um, that's absolutely fine but there's no authentication you have to think of this like when we create share links for files and folders like we've seen before think of it as anyone with the link the only purpose of adding let's say someone here let's say i'm going to go to teacher training here this one here then it's just going to send an email to absolutely everybody who's a member of that team with this link. If they forward this link to anybody else who's not a part of that team, they too will be able to submit files. Um, you can add students as well, or accounts, single accounts, STU1, there you go. So again, when I click on send, it's going to send everybody in this team and this uh, account here, it's going to send them an email with the link. Now I'm going to click on copy the link because I want to use it now. But let's say I forgot to copy that link. I'm just going to click on uh, send here. So it sends that email off. And you can see here, we will notify you when someone uploads files. So when somebody does actually upload the file, you will get an email notifying you that person has uploaded the file. Let's say you've, you've lost that link. You didn't copy the link. Well, how do you get it back? Or how do you go and find it and copy it? Well, remember the previous thing that we learned, manage access? Exactly the same thing. So I'm going to click on the three ellipses here. And I'm going to go to manage access for that folder. And there's my link. Anyone with the file request link can upload only. So if I click on this, I can obviously modify who I'm going to send this to. So, on and so but I'm just going to copy that link and then I can close that. So let's go and have a look and see this interface. So I'm going to open up a private window. Paste my link there and press enter. Okay, now anybody who has that link, this is what they're going to see. Nigos Buffy, this is requesting files for submit database project work till now. So this is like, instead of them submitting their final copy, this is also useful. If you're a teacher and you're using Teams assignments, which is absolutely fantastic, the good thing with assignments is students can actually upload their work, you can review it, give them feedback based on what they've done, they can correct it and do that. But that only works if they're using something like a Word document or a OneNote or Excel. If they're using some other kind of package, for example, database and this, that, the other, if you give them feedback on what they've done, they then have to remove that file and then do the work and then attach the file again. Okay, so instead of doing that, I like using when, when they're creating other files like um, uh, files where they're creating logos or databases or this, that, the other, files which cannot be viewed directly online and worked on online. Um, I use this feature here so I can see where they are giving the feedback and then they use the Teams assignment to submit the final version. So if somebody now goes to here, select files, they will go to their computer area, so desktop. So this is student one. Student one wants to add these two files here. So you can select them and click on open. And now it's going to ask for the student name. So student will add their name. So I'm just going to put here Nick Pup. And I'm going to click on upload. And they're going to get a message saying, you know, their files have been uploaded successfully. There you go.
Now you saw there was no authentication, they were able to upload. Um, the upload is successful and you can now, if I close this, you can now, if you go into here, you will see that it has appended the student name, Nick Pub, to the front of the file name. So now you know exactly which files belong to who. Now, if we have a look over here, you could also see this folder here. The student collect work has also been synced in my Windows Explorer. And if I open that, I can also see that the files are in there already synced. So let's go add the work from student two as well and see how it's going to deal with this assignment docx. I think you've probably figured it out, but anyway. So let's just go back. So again, I'm gonna open up a private window. and uh, enter the link which they've got or using the link in their class Teams. Uh, I'm requesting files, select files. They're going to go to their computer. So this is uh, student two, selects both the work there, click on open, adds their name. It's going to be Mary uh, Solon, for example, and upload. Mary will also get a confirmation message. And now if we go have a look over here, Oh, and you can see here, uh, right, so you've got Mary Sol on there and she's got her name at the front and you can see how that assignment uh, .docx has been uh, made available for both those students because it's got their name at the front. So it doesn't matter whether the file name had the same name or not. And we could also see if we go back to our portal here and go to our student collect work, there it is there. Okay, so the only person that can actually see the files which have been submitted is the person who owns this folder, the folder that has been uh, created and you have generated a request files link. Nobody else, nobody can actually go in there and have a look at the, see the files or see who's added something or go and see their work. Now, if you've learned something new, you've enjoyed these three really fantastic features and you wanna stay up to date with any other new videos I come up with, then make sure you like, but more importantly, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.